Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. In the shadow of the mountain, or Krakat Alangui, Alangui, sorry, movie thoughts. I absolutely love the end jump scare there, although I suppose, yeah, it's, it's slightly built too, because you hear the, the flies, and the, the way the camera moves, it's clear that there's going to be something, you know. Does it make any sense? No. It doesn't have to. It's it's absolutely yeah. I I love the that kind of slasher movie ending scare because at the end of the day, a slasher movie is not about could this really happen. It's about what's going to scare the crap out of the young people today, and yeah, it it does that beautifully. The I I I suppose. You know, given all the the kind of you know Hollywood traits of this one that very intentionally gone for, you know, you you might have expected since the you know the legend does include that it is you know you know th this is not like oh this you know the the legend includes that it the the mountain water came from what used to be a person so. You know, it could have been that one of the characters became one. I, you know, I, I don't, th I don't think the shape shifting thing kind of quite counts for for that. But yeah, that, I think that could have been a decent uh, twist. Now, and I, I do think that the, you know, that the surviving hunter is actually, you know. That, that he sees his dead brother and is driven to get the 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 mountain walker you know that that's you know that that's fairly nicely done and it makes you know there's basically the the moment that we see him we the audience know what's you know what's gone on and we're like he survived that you know but to the other characters, they, they don't quite know what's going on. But then they see him stand there talking to himself, you know, or, or talking to someone that they can't see. And that is, in, in Greenlandic culture, the the idea that, you know, the 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 dead, you know, are they're not quote unquote completely gone necessarily. You know, that that does fit, although it's you know, they, they play it more as just this kind of, you know, almost split personality kind of thing. You know, it's 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 fairly straightforward. They don't go you know I, I think with a few rewrites, the whole the family connection the thing with being rejected from society and such, I think they could have worked something in where at the very end, like, the... I forget. I'm sorry, I'm not great with these Greenlandic names. He, he calls himself Jens, so that's... Yeah, Jens... You know, I think that they could have had him become one. That, like, because the youths reject him once they realize that, you know, I mean, he he legitimately tried to get, you know, he he really risked Pitak's life with the, yeah, so, yeah, you know, they, they reject him, and then we, you know, yeah, and then he becomes a mountain walker, and maybe before him, you know, the the you know Kisak became Akisiak became Aki 
Aki became one or, or something, you know. Now, I made sure to take notes. The body count here is six people. And considering there are only nine people total, I'm, I'm counting the uncle as dead. You know, they're... Okay, no, I'm counting him as dead. Plain and simple. He was stabbed. He looked like he was going to die. There's not that much reason to think he's going to make it, you know, all the way back there and then be completely... No, you know, he had that knife in his back for minutes and, you know, he completely... You know, and it's also absolutely ridiculous that he somehow managed to get the, the little boat thing over to the, you know, but, yeah, you know, that's slasher... But, yeah, nine people total, six of them died. The only three that were sure survived, you know, and, and again, I'm counting Jens as dead because it looks like he dies there at the end. Although, you know, after eight months of hunting and, you know, these other, you know, he seemed like he was dead there at the start, that he died there at the start as well. But anyway, yeah, the, the, the only ones we know to survive are the you know the, the two brother and sister and then Ula you know that's yeah it it really legitimately and and some of them died like real sudden too I did not see coming you know I mean I this is the second viewing I should have been able to you know I somehow it just the, the movie just has you right on the edge of your seat he starts dying I did not see that coming. Just you know, she she's there. Oh, okay, she's safe. Nope, knife in her back. You know, just yeah. And and when when Mika dies, I mean, you're like, oh, okay, it was just me. Oh, ass. It's you know, you scared everybody. And there, there went his throat. You know, just yeah. That's that's really. <laughs> and. You know something that, you know they they even say you shouldn't you know don't don't disturb the bones you're gonna get us cursed you know that is also you know that that goes across you know even if you don't know anything about Greenlandic culture you know up uh, bones don't don't you know that's gonna that's gonna cause trouble some kind of supernatural trouble. And, you know, they, they even have, you know, Mika even urinates there. And that's also done with CG, although I suppose that's, yeah, in, in, that, in that particular instance, I completely understand why they didn't want to, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that if they didn't CG it, they would have had him literally stand there, you know, you know but I'm saying so that they didn't have to, you know, deal with, like, you know, whatever kind of tube mechanism thing that they use on movies when we see a character urinating. You know, in case you didn't know, if you see a character urinating in, you know, in a major movie or something, that's probably not the actor doing it. It's most likely a, a faked, yeah. Now the, you know, and and when Aki is like, you know, we have to take Mika, and we can't just, you know, we can't leave Mika out there. He's a friend of ours. Now the the basic, you know, superpowers that we see the the mountain walker use in the movie. You know he he runs past the you know the the view either of of just the audience or possibly of some characters as well, and he'll stand still, and then when someone turns away, the camera cuts or something, he'll still be standing still, but he'll have gotten closer, almost as if he's like teleporting or something, and you know he. There's there's this one time you know they they're looking for Ula and they see him and he kind of fades into like invisibility basically there's the 
you know, they're, they're, and, and he's just in general really, you know, f fast and strong and, and such. And then there's, you know, and, and I thought this was really interesting. They actually have him shapeshift. Like, he, he looks exactly like first Mika, then A Aki. And what I love is when it's, when it's Aki, we, the audience, know. Nobody else saw that. But when Mika turned out to be the mountain walker and killed Aki, we know that when you see one of your seemingly dead friends standing there, it's the mountain walker. He's just looking like your friend. And, and that's something where the, the CG was absolutely perfect. The, the mouths and the eyes, when they're like, stand there, you know, and they're, they're like kind of drooling blood and the mouth, the actor opens their mouth wide and then the CG just pulls their face, you know, and, and the eyes just, yeah, that was terrifying. And that actually, that was very reminiscent of like Asian horror, you know, the, the ring and the eye and stuff like that, where they'll also take you know, the, the face of a young person who looks basically fine and just pull it slightly open or make it, make it all black or the, that kind of thing. That was, yeah, that's, that's some of the most terrifying that you actually see. And really when, when you, when you break it down, it's relatively simple, but it's again, like I mentioned in the review that you know, the, the in, in the review I talk also about the, the Danish slasher Final Hours where it's just, you know, I think like eight people or something, students in a school. And it's just that it's after hours. The, the, there are no, they're the only ones in the entire school. And just that, just them being by themselves in this large empty school at night, that's terrifying. It's it's so close to regular, but just slightly off. And that's the thing with the, the faces. And really, the, the shape-shifting itself could have come across as just genuinely silly. If they had played it wrong, you know, seeing a character we know morph into... And it's, it's, relati it's a relatively simple effect, you know. It's not like this big CG monster or something. It's just that... They had both actors go through that, you know, that short sequence, and then in editing, they, you know, there, there might be some CG as well, but it's not a, a very big or a really expensive thing. But, yeah, you know, seeing a character that we know as one of the, the just the, the regular youths become this, you know, this being, and, and the the design of the the mountain walker himself in the the seal skin and these excuse me long thick boots and such that could also very easily have come across as really silly but it just works they they played exactly right now And when, you know, it's also just, you know, Mika is actually left there for hours. You know, the, the, the girls all fall asleep and all this, you know, yeah, he's, he's out there for just hours with, with just, you know, the, the, this unrepentant killer that murdered this innocent youth just left him there for hours, but enough about American cops. And that's also, you know, you, in, in slashers, you always have them making, you know, stupid decisions like, oh, why, why, no, don't go out there. He's, he's looking out and he's like, that's my friend out there. I can't just leave him out there. This is, you know, and, and you feel it. It's, you know, when, when I was, I was like, you can't leave him out there. And then the character says, I can't leave him out. You know, it's just, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. It's, 
yeah, what are they going to do by bringing him in? And they, you know, there's going to be like infection, you know, the danger of infection. And it's, you know, it's, it's gross to have to carry a body. And it's, that's their friend out there. You know, it's just, that's, that's just, I really, that cuts deep. You don't want to just see your friend lying dead out there. That's, yeah. And, and, and then suddenly, you know, gone. And just, yeah. Now, the, I did think that, you know, yeah, this is where we get into some of the, kind of silly and and almost feel like they were they were written in either at the last minute or they were written in knowing that it didn't really make sense but you know it was maybe something they wanted in the movie or something the the mountain walker captures ula and seems to do nothing to hurt her at all she didn't even seem that you no know, she's not like don't worry i'm not hurt or please you have to help me he come here nothing just and and i do like that you know when they find her she's lying on this big I, I don't know if that's like polar bear or what exactly but you know this big fur and yeah you know if if he's wearing seal skin it makes sense that there would be this other you know animal fur skin that yeah but you know they're like, we have to go, you know, they actually kind of expected to find her and then they actually do. And it's just, it's, it's never even really addressed. Why didn't he kill? It's not like he doesn't kill women, for example. He kills Kistat with no problem. So, yeah. Of recent reviews, this is the one where I've had the easiest time remembering characters' names, even though they're names that I haven't heard outside of this movie. I think that really, that's a testament to how invested I am, in how, how yeah, invested I became in these characters. Now, the, you know, did Jens really spend eight, mo eight months just out there, just hunting you know i mean if if it turned out that he had been living in their cabin maybe but how did he survive out there and the, the first time when watching it my dad suggested he's a mountain walker you know because that would that would help explain but no he's there's no you know and you know they they did do you know like his he does look like he's been you know, I guess the, yeah, like, like he, he hasn't had access to, he doesn't look completely like, you know, freshly shaven maybe or something, but, you know, yeah, they, they do that. He, he has a slight, like, no offense, homeless kind of, you know, thing with, with some of, some of his appearance, but then eight months he must have shaven because there's no way he has that little facial hair in eight months. And I, this, this wasn't, this one isn't necessarily all that silly, but you do got to love. I, yeah, they, they, the writer had just watched face off or something. I was like, I like that knife bit. So, you know, when, yeah, you know, it's it's set up. The 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 radio and the knife are set up very early on and then don't come into play until very late. I, I mentioned this in the review as well, but yeah, you know, and the you know the radio we, we see it I guess they used it to call the uncle from I mean it hasn't been three days, I don't think. But yeah. You know, the the you know, so, yeah, she she has it and unfolds and just jabs him right in the thigh. You know, that's good. And that is also something that, you know, I, I mentioned the, the cell phone elimination in the review. And I do really like that, you know, 
clearly the mountain walker is like screwing with them like toying with them you know there is he could he could have killed them if he wanted to when he took their cell phones or at least more of them you know well yeah yeah when he takes the cell phones he hasn't killed anyone since the the hunt that we haven't seen him kill anyone since the hunter at the, at the Tim League I want to say so yeah you know it's just like yeah he's he's hunting them he's legit just you you are going to stay right here and not get any help and then you know once he's killed one or two of them he takes all the food and everything else and yeah it's like we can't stay here we don't have anything to you know yeah that's that's really really nicely done and yeah it 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 feels like this is the kind of you know we never actively see him really like when when a character sees him usually it means that not long after that he's actually going to attack someone there's there's really only when 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 Pitak sees him that's yeah through through the window as he's standing I think he's like doing the dishes or something and then the others come up and he looks away and then he's gone nothing really happens there but it's not very long after that and that really that is the one time where they see him and he doesn't attack at all and the yeah the the twist with you know there are two and that's that's what Timmy Leake said there at the start and just you know that's deliciously absurd that makes no sense the mountain walker specifically someone who was rejected from society who went out there alone you know it's it's not it's not a hunting pack and and then there at the end i guess there were three or did one of them survive getting shot in the face multiple times with those infinite ammo guns i i do feel like that's one of the only times where i feel like they you know when when they're just running and then they're firing guns and we don't really see at what i feel like that's a little bit kind of rushed it feels like you know i i get I, I basically get what they're going for, but I feel like there should have been a few times where just the characters stop for a few seconds, and then you know you see, you know either riflemen, you know fire, and we see and we understand at what because it just it feels like they're just sh running and randomly shooting, and yeah, and, and it's also you know you gotta love just how terrible the the gun safety is of of both you know they they are just absolutely terrible Pitak genuinely almost shoots Jens but Jens keeps like you know waving the gun around as if, if there's no danger at all of it going off and and yeah but yeah you know there are two. He didn't notice that in the eight months of hunting it. And how did how did he even survive eight months against one, let alone two? But yeah. Now. Ultimately, this mountain walker does boil down to a typical slasher killer which doesn't fly in the face of the legend but also isn't as interesting as the legend itself is now as I mentioned in the review the legend is hundreds of, hundreds of years old and maybe thousands of years old you know they, they do briefly mention in the in the movie I think what was it 1741 diary entry heads so, yeah you know with with Eskimo culture being 4,000 years old or yeah yeah it's it's a West Greenland legend Gr Greenlandic legend 
basically someone feeling shame or guilt because of like aggressive bullying you know maybe the yeah the the individual who might become a mountain walker maybe he couldn't provide or at least not provide enough and you know it's it's similar to kind of tribal mentality you know if you if you can't excuse me carry your own weight you know if you can't you know if if we need to be helping you all the time to survive you're going to slow us down and it might slow us slow us down to the point where in the long run we won't survive you know there's already so little food there's so there's so many dangers including the animals we hunt for food you know or or just have to avoid you know we we can't have you slowing us down so the yeah the, the mountain walker leaves the 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 group and goes to live in caves on the mountain and it's entirely understood he will die soon you don't live for very long that far out you know you're not gonna live through a single winter out there which doesn't mean that becoming a mountain walker is the same thing as committing suicide although some suicides may well be someone you know going mountain walking as it were in in yeah going to become a mountain walker now once dead the you know the the spirit of the mountain walker must want revenge for the bullying you know this is this isn't something it's it's not that the mountain walker comes and tells you tells you i want revenge but the people who bullied someone to the point that they went out knowing that they might die out there soon and not not fast either just soon soon but they might freeze to death yeah you you know if there's some chance that if there's any afterlife he's coming back for revenge on us and once he's dead he will become like a, what we would understand as a ghost or a spirit and avenging, punishing, judging spirit, some, something along those lines. And he would gain superpowers, the, the, the powers of teleportation and levitation or flight as, you know, being a spirit. And he would have sharpened senses like that of a predatory animals to better hunt you down with, dear. He does scare you to death. He, you know, it's it's you know, to to where he'll he'll scare you so much that your heart stops, like a heart attack or something, or he will, you know, infect you with something that you will die from, and some some illness, you know, of a variety of different ideas, you know, about what he might do to you and and unfortunately many of them we don't know and we won't know because they didn't you know it's it's an oral tradition kind of thing. they don't you know they they didn't really write things down so you know all we have are what's been written down either since you know or or what yeah like Danes who went there, what they wrote down from what people would tell them, and yeah. Now, like I say in the review, I know some about Greenlandic culture, as my father has spent a lot of years in Greenland and knows a lot. You know, he spent six years studying Eskimology. He knows a ton about Greenland and he's told me many many things and I'm fascinated by the mythology as I am with Norse mythology and as such I when I first you know when when he first handed me the DVD and said Greenlandic horror movie my first thought was not the mountain walker it was what 
they what what in Greenland in Greenlandic is called to be luck. There's really no Danish, much less American word, but it translates roughly to to be scared or to scare. So I'm going to refer to it as the scarer. Now, the scarer, I, I really think this could have worked. Even in they they if they changed this movie a little, it could have been about a scarer. Basically, I mean, we're, we're a little closer to like Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow in how detailed the, the magical creation of the, the creature is, but I think it could have worked. I think that, you know, they, they find some signs and they go into a little more detail about the legend and, you know, maybe the, you know, the, the bones that, that you find, you know, where he you know, does the Hamlet thing, maybe, you know, not only bones and like human skull and that kind of thing, but maybe there are some other, you know, I'll, I'll get briefly into that, but I really do think that could have worked for this movie, and yeah, you know, it would just be a little more of... Yeah, it it would it would require some rewriting for reasons I'll that'll become clear once I detail it some more. But I do think that it could have been a really yeah you know at the start if we actually see them try to to kill any large animals, which would of course that would have made okay yeah the the movie would have had to be changed drastically. But I still I hope that one day someone will give enough money to the the direct I, I want to say Malik Kleist if that's how you pronounce it and in general just the you know yeah that that they would get enough money and real opportunity to do a movie about a scare now the first I'll note that as far as I understand, the, the scarer does not eat what it kills. It doesn't eat at all. It, the, the idea is a preemptive strike. You know, you feel threatened on, on your life. And, that, you know, there might not be a real threat, but you're still going to attack just in case. So a lot like today's military preemptive strikes. Basically, the... It, it is a creature. It has been created by a person. Now, originally, this person would need to be a shaman, the, the tribe's shaman, but it can be done by, you know, regular people as well. It's, it's a form of black magic. You have to build it with, you know, in, including out of bones, you know, human bones, animal bones. It doesn't have to be the, the bones of a predatory animal, you know, and the scare is completely individual, you know, it's, it's up to the owner. As an example, you might use the beak of a raven, the skull of a human that you take from a grave. You know, you, you'd use turf for musculature, and you would lace it together with thread made from sinews. And, you know, part of what gives it its power is the, the will of the creator of the scare. And the, in, in order to bring, bring it to life, you'd have to say a spell. And then it would be, you know, made bigger in size. And this would be by sucking on the generals, you know. Yeah, the extracting semen, of course, although they wouldn't go into that detail, for three days and three nights. And then it will ask, although it may, you may need to throw it into a small river first, then it will ask, who do you want me to kill? And the creator will say the name of the target. He won't just, you know, indicate, oh, you know, my neighbor two doors down. No, he will specifically 
say the name because in Greenlandic lore the name has great power you know it, it has a soul just like everything does every joint in your finger has a soul you know if if you have like great pain in a finger joint it's because that the the soul of that finger joint you know there's there's something going on there and that actually that makes a, a fair decent amount of sense you know com compared to early Christians who think well if there's something wrong with you you're possessed by a demon or you know so something you know in Greenlandic you know okay where where exactly is the problem it's in that particular joint of that particular finger okay well we you know anyway I'm not gonna get into any kind of you know religious rant or anything here the 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 fact that there are you know all these souls all over the human body is actually why in in you know old times when one Greenlandic person would kill another you know where we're talking about someone murdering someone else not you know they're not otherwise no they they murdered this person they would actually have to cut them into small pieces and you know full blanders scatter them over a wide area so that the souls would not be able to reconnect and recreate the the full spirit of the person as they would then come for revenge and the eyes could not look directly at the murderer they would have to you know they're they're far too powerful for that they would have to be you know plucked out and hidden in the urine bowl you know once someone had died they would not use that name for a while you know what one thing is you know they're not gonna name you know if, if like someone dies and then there's like a you know yeah let's let's say a grandfather dies and their you know grandson is is born very close to another they're not going to use the grandfather's name for the grandson that's that's one thing you know it's for for one thing then the the soul won't be able to rest another thing is they won't mention that name for a while because then the the soul of the name won't be able to rest and this is actually again when you break it down when you stop to think about it you know they're they're mythologizing human emotions of and and other things when when someone we care about has died whenever we bring it up whenever we talk about that person there's some part of you that like hurts because i i miss them you know and they've translated that into well there is an entity that we offend whenever we bring them up you know it's it makes a lot of sense it it explains that particular thing really well and that's that's something i i urge you to look into greenlandic lore because they explain so many things that you know today we we have modern explanations for those things they explained them from limited knowledge and in a way that made sense and in a way that meant that they could you know function in spite of some very strange things and yeah these are things where like you know there there are some groups of people if you yeah you know if if you say you you know the the yeah you know the if if you try to explain something that they don't 
like you know okay i this isn't this isn't to any specific religion any any group any group of people who believe that you know that that young people shouldn't be having sex period yeah you know they shouldn't be having sex before they're married they're gonna teach abstinence and that leads to you know less safe sex and less educated sex instead and yeah you know that means that this thing that's actually you know that's that's where it com comparatively if if a Greenlandic tribe had to deal with like teen pregnancy and such, you know, and, and yeah, STDs, they would come up with some explanation for why, you know, that particular thing is happening. And, you know, somehow it would lead to them explaining you have to have safe sex, you know, some, some kind of the the Greenlandic people they're not like oh we we you know we can't we, you know there are things that they're not comfortable talking about but then it relates directly to something that yeah in in one way or another you know just yeah Greenlandic culture is absolutely amazing now the yeah, the the I believe that that covers the the name thing. To to get back to the scare, the you know once you've told it, once once the creator of the scare has told it, the the name of the person to kill, it would become a large sea mammal, you know, a a seal, a narwhal. A polar bear, although I realize a polar bear isn't necessarily sea man, but yeah. And the the next time the hunter targeted by the scarer goes out to hunt, he will harpoon the scarer, which is not any natural animal, and it will capsize his kayak and pull him under, killing him. But if the living spirit, or I suppose you could say the character of the hunter, is stronger than the character of the scarer, then the scarer will return to kill its creator instead. And, and yeah, scare the creator of the scarer to death. And this explains why someone might die in their bed. Maybe they're delirious. Maybe they're rambling about someone is going to kill me because that's the kind of thing when you're delirious that's one of the things you might you know either either it makes you think that or it just makes you say that that you've been thinking and you know to, to anyone who witnesses that they're gonna say well he thought someone was trying to kill him he created and sent a scare but the, the character of the target was stronger, so the scarer came back and is killing him. And that, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. You know, this is, we would say, well, he's delirious from fever, or maybe it's alcohol withdrawal. You know, I, I mentioned in the review that, you know, a lot of Greenland, you know, they... they stereotypically drink a lot and yeah if you're like if you get really drunk and then you like lose control maybe you you know maybe you break something that you care about maybe you hurt someone you care about or something and you're like that's it I'm not gonna get drunk again and because you had so much alcohol in your system yeah you you end up going through alcohol withdrawal and yeah, that that was their explanation for that, and you know, th and and this is also this this explains why a hunter might you know be capsized when he's hunting. It's not that this sea mammal was naturally stronger than the hunter, because that's how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the idea that 
what was, you know, yeah, that's just so, so instead, or, or I suppose you could say that is how they deal with it. It's not that the, 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 the strength of the animal that killed the hunter comes from the fact that it was a scarer and, of course, then, you know, and, and then the, the family of the hunter might create a scarer and send after whatever hunter they suspect was sent the scare after them but you know the the idea is some someone actively wanted this hunter to die it wasn't it wasn't like bad things happen no someone wanted him to die it happened because an active will targeted him you know and it is considered self defense you know it's it's not wrong for you to create a scare you're just defending yourself you know and this is of course the you know the same idea that unfortunately the the nazis used to excuse to rationalize you know killing the jews they they told themselves and each other that in the long run the jews would lead to their own downfall and you know again this originally when you're fighting over very limited resources a specific person or a specific group might keep you from getting at least enough resources to live in in the long run and in Greenland there's always been periods of a shortage of sea mammals and yeah, it's it's incredibly important who get you know to to go out there and get food and who gets you know and does someone get more than someone else and yeah and it's you know inherent in Greenlandic lore is the the will of the invisible nothing is random I read once this. I, I believe it was like Christian missionary or something who was like, to, you know, he, he saw a mountainside collapse and the Greenlandic, you know, in, in Greenland and the, the Greenlandic people that he, he was with, you know, he, he said, well, that's just, you know, I forget if he said it was random or if he said that God was, that, that God caused it, probably to him God caused it, where to them, the, the mountainside was offended and that's why it it had a negative reaction please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content